Today I'm tying Jay's perch pattern. Stay tuned. Good morning. So, today I'm at the bench and tying something brand new. Um, the last few videos uh, I've really been into just preparing for the springtime, tying up different flies that I'm going to use for walleye um, and pike for this upcoming spring. So, a couple months until that that's going to happen so um, hopefully we'll have a nice mild spring so we can get out early with the camera and maybe you know catch some fish on those three way three three way rigs um, with those walleye flies so I'm looking forward to that tying just been tying as much as I can of course getting ready also for my springtime sales and you know why not sit down and try to do something you know like a third thing because I have so much extra time right uh, another thing that that has been um, a topic recently uh, with videos that I've been showing um, we've tied a lot of sand pike the perch patterns traditional perch the um, black yellow and orange combination with the with the black head the um, typical Let's switch over here just the typical um, perch pattern that you see all the time um, and you know I I enjoy fishing with this pattern jig um, you know it's a fish catcher for sure we've also just in a recent video talked about the perch patterns and tied the sand, uh, fire tiger So again, it's a three color pattern, you know, the, the fire tiger being what I think is a perch pattern um, with just some of the, the fluorescent colors, you know, just a little bit brighter perch pattern. But today, I've definitely worked through the colors that I wanted to use for the perch that I was going to do with the Airheads line. So I'm basically what I'm going to have is a solid six patterns for the airbrush line. Be able to just keep in the inventory. I'll still play with that. Um, I enjoy coming up with the different color combinations and um, trying to recreate some of those hard body lure type patterns but on a jig um, as best we can while still tying that old style traditional bucktail hair jig so so let me show you what I got here uh, we'll switch one more time so there we have the barumba head and this is just a one half the top back of the of the jig is that dark dark green that if I layer it if I added another layer it would be even more dark more black looking on the top of this jig it's got the pearl yellow base coat for the majority of the head with a little bit of orange on the heel which will end up uh, blending in with the uh, thread that we've chosen for the collar. And I just went with the fluorescent eye. Uh, there was another eye that I was playing with, the uh, yellow pearl straight from the bottle, um, because it looks kind of golden, uh, was an idea, or even uh, a metallic gold would be interesting uh, for the eye. But I went with the fluorescent eye, uh, which is typical on 90% of 
of my jigs, that yellow, fluorescent yellow eye. And on the flat heads, it ends up looking really, really nice. And then here is a finished jig. This has the tinsel down the back, um, just like the American Shad. And it might be a little bit hard to see um, with the lights being so bright in here, but there is a half, uh, there is about a dozen strands right down the back. And it's the Dark Crystal hair. It's a CH11. It's not quite the black like we used on the American Shad. Uh, it looks very greenish. Even it, it, it looks like a black fiber but where the light shines through uh, it's a lot of green and maybe like a yellow that comes through it's a it's a really pretty flash and it's it, it's dark so it matches the dark green on the top of the jig and the top wing um, looks black on my monitor but that is uh, a dark green it's from the brown patch on the back of a green tail so it's got a mix of green fibers and the darker brown fibers and of course the regular the plain yellow body with the orange belly and the orange thread for the collar blends in nicely and this is just striped with black um, I played with a couple striping them in green and the green I thought was a little bit too light you know maybe if they had a, a really nice permanent marker with a dark dark green that would look fantastic um, but I'm really pleased with how this uh, jig came out the airbrush pattern um, I, I think looks very natural on Instagram if you follow me on Instagram there's a couple close-up pictures and maybe I'll put them at the end of the video here with the spray pattern when you look at it super close there really is it, it's not just a hard line between colors because it's airbrushed but what I found after adding the clear coat how it just blends everything together super pleased with how this came out and in terms of um, the difficulty in painting it's manageable just like with the shad and the walleye patterns it, it does have a few extra steps it's not like the huckleberry which is just a, a pearl plum base coat and then using that uh, the dark purple uh, on the back and just layering it so it goes grades from you know there's a gradient change from the dark purple blackish down to the lighter violet which is quite easy uh, in my opinion in terms of difficulty in painting but the perch pattern looks super nice and isn't any more difficult or any more steps than the walleye pattern or the, or the American Shad so super pleased so let's tie one up they look great when they're finished And we'll switch over, we'll turn on my face. So here we go, uh, in the vise, uh, another one half. The thread I'm gonna use, this is old Goodrod, rod wrapping thread, size A, in the orange. And I chose this just so there would be a blend uh, with that orange, spray that's on the heel of the jig I guess you could call it that that bottom corner and then it would it would blend in with the orange belly that we're going to use just the plain orange orange tail so to begin with now this is like I said this is an old already used up green tail and I'm using the, the hairs on the back of it the tip of this tail it's a little short though I do still have the base and I did tie up a few that had some of these green 
fibers, the white that was dyed green, mixed in a little bit extra, mixed in, and that looks just fine also. Though I really liked when I chose a pinch that was from the darkest part of the tail. That at first glance looks more black, um, but if you look at it closely under the light, you know, it goes from black to olive to green. There, there are still some of those white fibers in here that are the dyed white that are just green. And when the pinch is compressed, of course, you could tell, oh, that's from a green tail. But once it opens up and flares around a little bit, it looks a little bit darker. So I'm thinking that as this is being fished and just moving through the water, the hair is going to look a little bit like, um, you know, the colors are going to be changing. It's going to look lifelike, uh, a little bit more lifelike than just a solid black. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> it's what we're telling ourselves because it sounds cool, right? That's what we print on the back of the package to get people to buy it. So I measure my pinch. The tail will be the length of the body past the bend of the hook. And I lock this into place with a few reps towards the bend of the hook and a few reps back towards the, the head of the jig and of course there's our V. And I'm going to give this a twist. Before we continue I will rotate the jig in the vise like so. And then I'm just going to pick, I don't spend too much time counting these out, but I grab a pinch between 10 and a dozen of the crystal hair CH11. I don't want this to be as thick as the wing on the top. I want it just to go right down the center line. And it will add a little bit of flash as it moves, it, though it doesn't have to overpower or be a complete wing itself. I'm not sure how well that's showing up, but that's, that's not too much. And it's, it's enough flash that'll go right down the center and still have some of that darker hair on each side. And we can rotate the vise back up. At the very end, we'll take a look at those fibers. If they're, I, I don't want them to extend past the length of the tail. We'll snip off any tips that we need to. Next, we'll just go with a regular yellow bucktail. Uh, I did uh, take a look at fluorescent yellow and how that would look. Um, fluorescent yellow would look, I think, really good if the base coat that I added was less of the sealer color, uh, which is also yellow, that base color, um, in the pearl yellow, if it, was, if it was a higher percentage of the pearl yellow, um, because that pearl yellow is very, it's golden looking. It's like a, um, what's, it, what's it called? A golden pheasant. It has, it has that color to it. Um, and, and, it, and it's closer to a fluorescent color in that sense. Um, but comparing the two, the uh, mix of the yellow sealer along with the pearl yellow, um, it's closer to a 50-50 mix, um, and that's the color that we have here. So like always, I restack, and just like in the Perch and the Fire Tiger videos, the bucktail that we're, the pinch as we're measuring it is uh, a third, a third, and a third. If one pinch is a little bit heavier than the other, you know, you can reduce it. Sometimes I've done more of a 50-50 pinch with the green and the yellow. 
and then a very sparse uh, pinch for the orange. All, all fish are different. You can compare perch, one that you caught right after the other, and you if you compare them, they're colored the same, but at the same time their colors are much different. Uh, the amount of dark colors versus light colors, so everything's different in nature, and I don't get too hung up on if the pinch, if one is a little bit thicker than the other, that's all part of your style uh, and, and, and how you adjust to that. You know, it's not that we don't make mistakes, it's just how we react to those mistakes and, and how we, how we, the steps that we take after making those mistakes and, and either working with it or, you know, it's garbage, right? Maybe I'll have to talk about that sometime. Not right now, it's too early. Up way before everybody in the house. And, and like, I, like I just mentioned, so this orange pinch is much thinner than those other two. It still has a little bit of volume to it, but it definitely was a smaller pinch than the yellow. Partially because just the, the section of the tail that I'm taking this from on the orange tail, the hair is very fine, um, kind of straight. The yellow tail, the hair was fine, but it, had, it has a little bit more of a wavy texture to it. Again, I can measure this the same length as the yellow. Uh, you could also tie this in as a beard. You know, tie it in, tie it in much shorter, maybe half the distance, uh, like we like we do on the bearded banana. That would look that would actually look really good, and you know, be a, a really nice pattern uh, and, or style or a way to tie that jig. pinch tight throughout the whole process. Lay that right in place. Lock it on. And I'm just going to let go just for a second just so I can rotate my vise. What I'm looking at is where the last wraps are on this collar. I want to make sure that I do line those up on both sides. Um, occasionally if I'm going really fast I might be holding this pinch much closer, this final pinch, and if I wrap on the threads, wrap the collar, there might be a layer of the collar that might stick out here, and that's that's the only thing that I'm correcting right now, just making sure they line up, so when I walk the threads to the head, and then back about halfway, and then back to the head, that looks nice and pretty. You can whip finish this by hand or use a whip finish tool. I like to take a loop of thread of a different color, put it underneath my last wrap, and then again I can wrap the threads back about a third of the way and then back to the head. Before we finish the collar, we do want to add stripes, but at this stage I will take it out and I pick up the fibers of the tail and just drop them so they center themselves on the hook, along with centering the flash. And now I can kind of lightly just hold the base of the tail so I can let the so I can let the crystal flash kind of dangle and I can see the fibers there's there's a few of them that are just past the tip of the hair 
I'm just going to trim them just so they're not past. Just so they're not past the length of the tail. I want them to be uh, the flash. I want the flash to be the same, if not uh, slightly less than the length of the hair. So, but that looks good. So I can put that back in the vise. The hair is now centered on the hook point. So when I slide my fingers back, the hair is. Uh, equal on each side. I can have my stripes with my black permanent marker. This is the Milwaukee Inksol, but you could also use Sharpie. You could use um, any of the craft type markers that you find at, um, not craft, that's not the right term, uh, the artist type uh, markers that you'd find at fly shops and art supply stores, things like that. As long as it's permanent, um, you can make your your stripes on your hair. Um, you, you won't have to worry about it fading. You won't have to worry about it washing off. And um, I think the uh, Milwaukee Inksol. This really has, you know, the, these are just my all-time favorite at this point. Uh, marker. Just love the Milwaukee stuff. We will finish this with a coat of lacquer based head cement. This cement is a little bit thin because I have been tying a lot of those walleye streamers um, that we've been showing in uh, the last couple videos and um, just to coat the bodies on the, the hook shank itself. Um, but it'll be just fine, it'll soak in. It'll, it'll soak in nicely. I, I did. I was a little heavy handed on, with that, um, so I'm just letting this. I rotate my vise just so I don't get a, a bubble of head cement on one side. And let that soak in. But look at that jig. That looks great. I really like the way the colors blend together. The base yellow, even though it has that pearl property, and, I, and I'm not sure if it shows up much on the camera, um, but the uh, pearl colors, uh, it's almost like a, I guess the only way I could describe it is like a candy paint. Um, where if you look at a candy apple red, it looks red, but if you kind of look at it in the light and, and move it, uh, you know, you see the other colors of flash and the different shades of red that are in a color like that. And the pearl colors are, are, are similar. So this is a great looking jig. I am looking forward to fishing with these this summer. That's going to catch me fish all day long. So, I think that will do it for us today. If you have any questions on tying the three color pattern or um, how we go about adding some of the tinsel, um, there was another tinsel, uh, Crystal Flash, that I thought about using. Like I said, it was more of a yellow um, flash that would match a little bit nicer with the floor if we went with a fluorescent yellow hair so you can jazz even even you can even take a pattern like this and jazz it up a little bit so um but i think that will do it for us today as always if you have any comments or questions about what we've done here today put those down below um, definitely hit like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content Feel free to share any of our videos as it does help increase awareness for the for the uh, channel. Check out the new website, uh, jworthhandtied.com, uh, for any of the jigs here. Uh, it'll be a few days, but I'm going to tie up a bunch of the perch pattern that we saw here today. 
those will be on the website for sale um, along with all the other airheads and uh, the walleye streamers that I've been doing lately slowly I've been adding uh, the other jig patterns um, from the inventory uh, I do a few I do a few every few days I'll sit down and I'll photograph what I need to and I add them uh, right now it's mostly the Barumba the airheads and the walleye streamers uh, but slowly we'll get the rest the, the flat heads the round heads as well as our ice fishing line and what else is on there oh I found a uh, I got a great deal on fly hooks recently so there um, there's a couple pages on there with um, tools and equipment um, hooks anytime I find really good deals um, I actually squirreled away about half of what I found and put the rest on online I'll pass along those savings to you when I find good deals so there's um, a good selection of must add dry fly and um, smaller streamer hooks I think I squirreled away the larger ones <laughs> to use for myself I've I got a couple here I've already tied up um, nice red and white on a mustad limerick style hook so anyways that'll do it for us today until next time guys keep tying and tight lines <laughs>